Hello and welcome to the LifeBridge Fall Fundraising Event. My name is Andy Johnson and I have the privilege of being the Executive Director of LifeBridge, a nonprofit 501c3 mentoring program seeking to change the lives of at-risk kids through mentoring. We're here today in front of Kingswood Regional High School where it all started 17 years ago. Today we're mentoring kids in 10 public schools and partnering with over 20 churches in the local area. You're going to hear from various speakers who are going to help us understand youth culture, family dynamics, and mental health issues. Good morning. Uh, today we have Principal James Riley with us, and he's going to share with us maybe how we can uh, better mentor kids. I'm just wondering, um, you know, what kind of stressors are you seeing in the middle school level? The biggest one is technology. You know, uh, mm -hmm. the technology and the amount of technology that has happened over the last 20 years um, is pretty significant. Um, it, it, kids don't have a break. You got your Snapchat, your Instagram, your TikToks, your Discords, your, you know, uh, you name it. And, and your Roblox, right? I mean, even the kids getting older with playing the Roblox, it's a different universe for, for you know, I, I stay I try to stay up with it, but it's a different, if not metaverse, right? I mean, these kids are now living in metaverses with Roblox, mm -hmm. with the VR. Um, that's something we, we, we don't necessarily have that direct knowledge about. Um, and so when conflict happens, which always does, they go home and it's right there in their face. They can't yeah. shut it off. So I think that's, technology is huge, I think, with, yeah. with the stressors. Um, and the other piece is connections. You know, um, kids are looking to connect, be a part of something. Mm. And um, some kids are out straight doing everything, mm. you know, sports, uh, music instruments, uh, whatever it may be that keeps them busy. And others are just looking to connect. Yeah. And I don't think that, that that's an age-old developmental we've always wanted. That's interesting connection. because the technology is all about connections, but they're lacking that personal one-on-one -on -one connection. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, you know, there's a whole nother layer of connection. And, 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 you know, I think with youth, being able to support what is a friendship, what is a mm -hmm. relationship, what is boundaries, you know, all those things through that is a challenge. When kids develop and compensate for whatever's going on because of the parents having to work and grandparents raising grandkids and they get to this level and they've built these compensatory skills for them but those boundaries and those situations aren't always the healthiest because they're surviving and I think we're seeing a lot more of those multi-generational situations impacting a kid and access thank goodness we live where we live because I think the intentions of families and parenting is really really good mm. Interesting. So we have great mentors. I mean, I wish we had a large army. We have a small army, mm -hmm. of, but it is, I think it's significantly more tough now for a kid uh, to mature. Um, and, and the parent piece, think about that. Parents, junior high, that was some of the most stressful times for parents, yeah. right? So that's why <clears throat> for me and, and, and to get parents into schools, because they, it's an experience that's almost post-traumatic stress when they walk their kid in the door, yeah. right? So I think that, you know, mentorship can really help bridge that gap of, like you said, boundaries. I mean, kids, we, kids are professional observer, observers of our behavior. Mm. The stability of a mentor, mm. uh, I think, is, is huge. And, you know, I don't think they need to know all the technology. I just yeah. think they need to know there are fads, there are things that are yeah. going on to at least break that ice, yeah. right? Um, that, wow, they're connecting with other adults. And I would say that's the biggest struggle for our mentors is they don't see the outcomes and they ex their expectations are high, yeah. And they're you know the the outcomes are slow to slow to come. Yep. If not, you know sometimes they don't show up until five years down the road. Hundred. You know it's it's very difficult. Um, but you know they're great people and they hang in there. Yeah. We try to f stuff it back at them, show it to them. Yeah. So they see it. You yep. know, um, and hopefully that's the the re the reward back of your time and of that energy and of that you know sleeping at night being like oh geez I'm really worried that. This is what's going on at home, you know, yeah. it's not to fix it, but to know that we, we are making a difference, you yes. know, and we might not see it until they're a parent. Yeah. We might not. And that's okay. And I've been doing this long enough. I see that. I have parents. I have parents coaching with me yeah. now yep. that I knew when they were in high school. Yeah. You know, it's 2003, pretty cool. 2004. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty. It's, and that's where the payoff, if you can sit through and realize, oh, yeah. it does make a difference. It really does. So right. I appreciate Great. it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.
got your information here, public health program manager. You know, yep. tell me about what you do, who you are, and you know what you guys try to accomplish. Yeah, so I work for Stratford County Public Health Network. We are also out of a nonprofit. So Ashley, LifeBridge is a mentoring program, and we've been working with kids for about 17 years. We started in May 2004. I hear this all the time in prevention trainings about how having trusted adults is such an important piece of kids' health. So that's really awesome that you all do that. Um, I was facilitating a program called Boss and Life Skills, which is all about building basic resilient skills in Mm -hmm. youth, whether it's through starting in middle school into high school. Mm -hmm. So really just thinking about that transition period of when they leave high school, like do they have the skills to know how to goal set and, how, you know, they have coping skills. Do they know how to effectively communicate um, and things like that? You know, um, in your line of work, what are, what are the most difficult challenges you see youth facing in today's culture? Yeah, I would say that the cultural impact that the media has had on kids is exponential. And that's not just social media. Um, I'm really interested in the impact of social media on the brain and kids' mental health. Um, but it's also the media in general, right? So what we read, what we intake really impacts how we think and how we feel. Uh, I think that's a huge piece of why youth are struggling. Um, another really big piece is the financial and economic impact on families. Uh, would you be interested in expanding on that a little bit, what you're thinking? Yeah, for sure. So obviously there are advertisements that kids see on social media, whether that's YouTube, whether it's on, you know, any other source of, um, source of our platform, but it's that interaction with each other that's not real, right? Like it is, and it's still valid. So the relationships relationships that you build online are still relationships. It's still a connection, but it's lacking these very important pieces of interaction. So let me ask you one one last question. You know, how do you see one to one mentoring helping a teen deal with these issues? I think it's to what you were talking about. It's a one on one connection, right? Like yeah. it's somebody cares. They're listening to me. They care about what I have to say. And even if you have strong parental role models or relationships in your life. I think that crucial piece is that those trusted adults, if I think back to, I said, Oh, when I was, when I was that age, it was the people around me, whether it was a church or grandparents that really had a significant impact on me because they were other trusted adults that I could talk to, even if I couldn't talk to my parents. Ashley, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. It's been great getting to know you. Um, And if there's any way we can partner down the road, that'd be wonderful. Um, We work, like I said, in all these different areas, and they're hurting kids everywhere. I agree. um, We'd be happy to do that. Hi, my name is Richard Menzel, and I'm area director for the New Hampshire Seacoast of Life Ridge Mentoring. I'm standing here in one of the neighborhoods where some of our students live. You know, a great question to ask is, what do young people get out of the mentoring process? When you get to know these students, you learn that almost every one of them has an issue with trust. Most of all, their adult relationships have left these kids wounded. Adults have seemingly abandoned them through things like divorce, incarceration, death, or extreme distraction with their own issues. The introduction of a stable, well-adjusted, and caring adult has the potential to build a trusting relationship. What eventually comes out of trust, suddenly a mentee begins to realize there is an adult who is focusing their attention not on their own needs and desires, but rather on the mentee. Over time, that mentee will begin to see that they can really make choices that have a positive influence on their lives. We found that 73% of mentees experience growth in their ability to trust. And the result of that is 87% have improved their communication skills. 50% demonstrate a behavioral difference among their family members and others. 67% demonstrate improved social skills and 57% show an improvement in their academic experience. 
Over the last four years, LifeBridge mentors have inv invested over 5,000 hours with young people at risk. This included a year and a half of COVID virus, which challenged mentoring in every other aspect of our lives. And yet, our resourceful volunteers found ways to stay in touch and to build trust. Listen to our next presenter, a former mentee, as he explains how the LifeBridge mentoring program impacted him. And so we're sitting here kind of interviewing you and just kind of getting an idea, you know, where is he now kind of situation. Yeah. So, but I want to brag about you a little bit because all this is under, you know, your watch. And we got a kid from Ospi who, you know, was a very sharp student, but not necessarily the best behaved kid and joined the crowd, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, here he is, you got a guy who owns this place and he gives you full control and full oversight of the whole marina, all these boats, and gives you a place to live. I'm very, very blessed. And here we are, I mean, 15 years later, and it's amazing. You got, you got a your wonderful wife, you got a, a house this guy, you know, says, hey, if you work for me, you get to live here. I'm gonna give you all full control over this business. And, um, you know, now you got a set of twins. Uh, you, you went to the, you were a Marine. Not was, you are a Marine, because once a Marine, always a Marine. Um, and, you know, you graduated high school, and, and you know, we're years down the road here. And you got another one on the way, right? Yes. Yeah, so when uh, is she due? Late October, about one month. Awesome, awesome. So, in responsible dad, and for you looking back, your time with LifeBridge, how has that formed you as a man? I know there's a lot of inputs in kids today. And, uh, but for you in particular, you know, the, we, we kind of invested some time. So, so what, uh, how has that formed you as a man today? Believe it or not, it was, it was actually a, a seriously critical point in my life. Um, my parents had just split. Um, so my world was upside down. I wasn't sure what was right and wrong, left and right. And I had a lot of different rebellious tendencies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm going to write that one down and we'll use that for later. Rebellious tendencies. I definitely, I know that LifeBridge came into my life at that critical point and they helped with structure, with guidance, with rules, general, how to be. Talk a little bit about how that's kind of formed you as a man today. Your time with these guys. I've actually recently talked about this and, and some of my experience with actually both gentlemen. Yeah. Um, and the first main one was, was Mark. Yeah. Uh, Mark Swenson, he was, I had, I was, he was my mentor yeah. and very much in every sense that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. He was a good man that I looked up to, uh, I wanted to be, he was an excellent family man starting off his family and setting a good example for me. When it comes to giving back to your community, you know, I feel like you're doing a great job as a dad, as a, as a you know, employer and a, as a, a manager of people and a, obviously a good dog owner. Um, you know, in other ways, are you, are you giving back to your community? I was essentially a mentor for the elementary kids mm. um, when I was a high schooler. Um, I did that because of actually some of my my rebellious tendencies. Um, I, I had to do um, community service and I had chose the Big Brother Big Sister program. Mm. Kept doing the mentoring program. I loved it. So it sounds like we have future conversations uh, regarding yes, mentoring. Definitely. Yeah, well, definitely. I think you'd be a great mentor, and I think that's something, you know, we could we could uh, pursue. And then here you are, you know, 15, maybe 20 years later, and you're a dad, and you still want to give more time as a mentor. And I'm I'm proud of that. I'm excited about that. I wish all our mentors could see that kind of outcome. Hi, I'm Mike Moore. I'm the chair of the board of LifeBridge. On behalf of the board and our entire team, I'd like to thank you for taking time out to watch this important video. One of the things that is uh, most important about being a member of the board is providing support and oversight to our staff and the organization. And that also includes oversight of the annual operating budget. Nearly 70% of our annual budget is dedicated to funding and supporting our staff. 
and the staff are tasked each year with raising their support one ask at a time through individual gifts, foundation, and grants, and they do a great job of doing that each and every year. The rest of our operating budget, about 30%, is raised through events just like this and our annual golf tournament, things like pie sales and virtual 5Ks, and uh, a host of other events that we've put together over the years. And that's where you come in. We're looking to raise close to $45,000 over the next several weeks as we look ahead to the end of this calendar year to set the stage for 2022 and to finish 2021 in a strong position. 2022 is going to be a great year for LifeBridge. We're looking forward to increasing our number of matches from 29 to 40 or more. That's 11 new lives changed by LifeBridge mentors. How do we get there? We need to recruit 15 or more new mentors. Recruit them, train them, equip them, and underwrite them. And we're looking to establish a relationship with at least one new school to add to the list of schools that we serve in the Lakes region, on the seacoast, and throughout our state. We're looking to make a much greater impact in 2022 on the lives of mentees and their families. What you will see next will give you that much more insight into the impact that our mentors have on their mentees now and for the future. In addition, you'll see the impact that our mentors have on a mentee's family. I ask you to join us in helping make 2022 the best year ever for LifeBridge, one mentee at a time. Thank you. Well, here we are, beautiful Ospie, New Hampshire, Constitution Park, the home of the Ospie Wildcats. What a beautiful day it is today, and I have Ashley with me. And Ashley's a mother, uh, among many things, but she's a mother of multiple kids in our program. And uh, she's a mother of three. Ashley, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Uh, you know, we're talking today just about what's going on with uh, kids and culture and how messy it is. And, and you know, you, you do a great job. And, uh, you know, I, we see what you're doing and see how hard it is and how well you're doing it. You know, what makes it difficult to raise kids in this culture? Social media. Social media. Thank yeah, you. it's social media. Yeah. And Principal would agree with you and so uh -huh. the social worker yep. that we interviewed. Yeah. When I see, when I was faced with this in elementary school, everybody else is getting brand new iPhones. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want my daughter to feel left out. So then I had a moral standpoint on Christmas, like, what do I do? And right. I caved. And I, and I went against yeah. all my intuitions and I regret it and I'm never yeah. doing it again. Huh. But then you have, like, with the cell phones and the what they're seeing and, and it's uh, that saying where you... Uh, you boredom is an opportunity for creativity and all cell phones do and social media in particular it drains your time and and valuable yeah. moments where it could have been developing skills to be something or somebody or interest in hobbies and, and making you better adults that like is, that is absolutely wisdom yeah and I, but i want you to know that every parent is, is in the same boat and we got five at our house and those cell phones are the biggest issue we have to deal with mm -hmm. you know bar none on a daily basis. Now there are bigger issues, but this thing is there every day and it, it, uh, it adds up to being a lot of stress. So you're not alone in that. Um, this has been great. I want to thank you for being willing to share your heart. You know, you know, so because you have kids in the mentoring program, how do you see mentoring help any of this? So that was the toughest, that's probably the tough, toughest question because I see that where it benefits me is that I have a, a trusting relationship with the mentor but enough that I don't feel like I have to I don't I don't feel like she has to tell me anything I trust mm. her and I trust her judgment yeah. both of them there's two mentors they can go to a safe adult for help yeah. and just overall just different perspectives because I'm not always right so maybe hearing it from a different adult yeah. like can I'm be better I'm thankful you use the word trust because what we talk about is putting a trusted adult in a kid's life and generally, you think, oh, the kids needs to trust the adult. But really, we need the parent to trust the adult as well. And trust that we as an organization are putting a healthy, trusted adult mm -hmm. in the kids. You know, and the school system has to trust that we do that, too. So across the board, we try to maintain this trust. And, you know, it's pretty easy when you pull from a, a group of people that are so solid. 
and it's very difficult. We only got like 40 mentors right now. Yeah. And that's because it's hard to find trusted adults. And, yep. And uh, when we do, we hold on to them. Yep. No, I definitely agree with that. So. Do you think this has benefited your daughter in any way? Or one of your, any one of your daughters? Um, so mostly, actually both of them, yes. Um, so it takes them away from them having that always need to be on Xbox, computer, the media, media. Yeah. And uh, it's giving them opportunities to um, do creative things, whether they go swimming, baking, in particular baking. The mentor can give her answers to questions and yeah, that you may not have. I don't yeah. have it. Yeah, sure. So um, that was really awesome to see mm. because I think it's benefited her. Mm. And then my other child just having, um, just knowing that she has that person there that's rooting her on and, and encouraging her yeah. to just do better has been amazing for her. Well, in a world of she kids. Has, she has trust issues too. Yeah. So. In a world of kids that don't do anything but sit and watch video and play video games, your kids are very active in sports, active in school. They're great kids and they're doing a great job. And so are you. So thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much, Ashley. You're doing a great job and thanks for helping us out with this. Yeah, you're welcome. That's great. Yeah, thanks for having me. We have Adria Miller here, and Adria was one of our mentees, and she spent two years in our program. She recently went to college, and she's from Wolfboro, New Hampshire. Adria, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. It's, it's really cool to see you. I can't believe it's been four years already. The last time I saw you was at one of our uh, fall banquets, and you uh, were a recipient of one of our scholarships. Um, and you're off to college and here we are. I can't believe it's four years later. Um, how have things been going and what's new with you? Well, so I recently just graduated from college uh, this summer, which is really exciting from Huston University. Um, and now I'm back in New Hampshire. So I went to college in Maine. I'm back in New Hampshire having a job at Dartmouth College as a lab technician too. Um, I just started, so it's fairly new to me, but I'm doing great. And I'm in my own apartment now. Yay. <laughs> so it's been a blast. With your own bills now, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Absolutely. It's the only it's the only side of it, you know. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you went to Hudson. What was your major? Forensic science. Forensic science. Very cool. It's interesting because I think that was your desired uh, major going in and you stuck with it. You're one of the few. Yep. Um, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. And it's, it's been great to catch up. Uh, so what are your plans going forward? What, like what's, what's what are you looking ahead? What are you thinking? Well, that's what I'm trying to decide because even with this first job that I'm in my first actual career job, it's been, you know, difficult trying to find a path where I want to go with my, um, you know, my major and everything. And, you know, I thought about being on the crime scene. I thought about being in the forensic lab, but you know, right now I just want to take things slow and have this as a starter job and then maybe go on to greater things in the future. That's really, I have high hopes for it right now. So. Awesome. Well, we, we know you can do it. That's for sure. Um, so then if you look back, my goodness, you had a mentor, um, I think it was like up until 2017 um, and you spent two years in our mentoring program. Um, looking back, how has your experience with Lightbridge kind of helped form you? And I know there's a lot of input in kids. You have good teachers, you have good guidance counselors, but you in particular had a good mentor. You know, how has your experience with Lightbridge kind of form you as a woman, the woman you are today? Well, mainly it's just definitely my communication, my mentor really helped me gain my confidence and pretty much gained, you know, my happiness pretty much since um, we did a lot of fun activities together. And it just, that bond really, you know, kept me going throughout all my tough times because um, it's been a lot, especially coming with this journey that I'm in now. Like she, you know, my mentor really helped me with that. And it's just, it was an amazing experience, really. It's just amazing communication and that's what brought me forward to this day so I'm grateful for that yeah I don't know if you're aware of this um a lot of people I don't think get, understand that Lightbridge you know our goal our focus is to build a relationship with a kid 
And so we take a trusted adult and we match them with a kid, uh, you know, and we call it mentoring. And, but what, what a lot of people don't realize is the byproducts. So we don't necessarily shoot for these things, but the byproduct, one of the measurable byproducts of a, a, an awesome relationship like yours is better uh, life skills and improved communication skills. That's like something that just happens. We know we could be trying to accomplish that, but really that's just a natural occurrence when you have a trusted adult, a caring adult in your life that's walking with you. Um, and I know that's kind of what you were saying. Um, it kind of helped pull you out of your shell a little bit and helped you see how to communicate better and, and, and allow you experience it and exercise it. And I think that's really cool. And you know, a lot of people take that for granted. They really do. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, and we also measure behavior changes, academic performance, um, we, we, uh, um, leadership skills, um, we me measure all these things. Again, we don't shoot for them, but they're byproducts of this authentic relationship. And that's why we love mentoring. That's why we do what we do. And I'm so proud of you. I think you are just awesome. I think you got a lot of cool things ahead of you. I mean, even coming out of college and being in your own apartment and having your first job, you're already light years ahead of most college graduates. I'm talking, right. you know, graduating last year and now right. look at you. And this is all in the midst of a pandemic and all that. And I just think it's awesome. Uh -huh. Andrea, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, thank you. And again, I, I would encourage you to fill out uh, a scholarship form um, because yeah. I think we can help you uh, with some, you've already spent a lot of money. You know, I think we could uh, help with maybe helping paying a little bit of that off. And, uh, and if you decide to go to get your master's degree, which I think you ought to consider, um, you could continue, uh, you can get a scholarship up to three, up to three times. And so you've only gotten one or received one. Um, great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day. Okay. You too. <laughs> The entire organization of LifeBridge, I want to thank you for your time. We could not do this without your support. Thank you. Thank you so much for mentoring me. I have enjoyed all of our visits, and I feel like it's such a strong bond with each other, so thank you very much. It's Mr. Miller. I'm so glad you're my mentor now, and I had a great time playing basketball, so I hope we can do it again. Hi, my name is Nevea, and I wanted to thank Nancy for being there for me for the past three years. Thank you, Nancy. Carmen, thank you for mentoring me. We had a great bond, and you're just so hyper with me, and I'm so grateful for everything. I enjoy hanging out with Pete because he's a good person overall. Uh, he's into a lot of sports, which I'm into as well. Um, he's able to accommodate to things I want to do, uh, but again, I have to accommodate to things he wants to do as well. Um, it's an enjoyable time overall, and I'm really fortunate that this was enjoyable. Thank you, Mr. B. Love you.